Hello, I'm Kael and welcome to my review of White Dwarf issue 169 from January 1994. I was still a freshman in the hobby and magazines such as this helped a lot to kindle my passion. The magazine starts with full fluff and rules for Adeptus Arbites written by Andy Chambers himself. Look at these beautiful goth orcs and their battle wagon storming fortified positions of the Blood Angels. And the glory of the cocktail stick cactus. And now an article on painting Eldar that is really useful. And look at this army, all the aspect warriors, guardians and their war machines. No surprise at the time I was mostly an Eldar player. And now some more stuff on painting the Eldar from various craft worlds. Ads for the High Seas Battle Game Manowar, the Lich King himself, and the Golden Demon competition of 1994. At these times models were painted to the standard that was achievable by a normal hobbyist provided he will spend enough time. And now the heart of the issue. A cardboard bunker you could cut out from the White Dwarf itself and build for your army. With all the rules, very intricate ones, placement of models inside, fire arcs and everything. The original Space Marine Rhino. It wasn't a new model even back then. And the rule cards. Everything in the second edition of Warhammer 40k had to have a card with rules. The bunkers are no exception. The special rules are both for the bunker itself and for missions involving bunkers. Very entertaining, even if disposable. Oh, the mighty Bjorn. And another mission for the bunkers. Actually, this mission is meant to be played with the basic models contained in the Warhammer 40k 2nd edition starter set. Nothing more, just the bunkers from this issue of White Dwarf and the starter set. I will try to do something like you see on this picture later. Here comes the bunker itself. It's printed on thicker cardstock and you are actually encouraged to photocopy this page if you need more bunkers. The building instructions. More Man o War stuff. Order forms, because the World Wide Web was only in Geneva at this point, basically. You were meant to cut these pages and bind them to create a catalog for yourself. And for some extra 90s nostalgia, this beautiful picture of a battle between the Empire and the Undead. Look at the gorgeous over-the-top battle wagon. You know what? Let's cut this artifact and create the bunker. Why not? Now I'm marking the lines where these pieces are meant to be folded, so that the folds are more precise, straight and neat. White glue is perfect for this job. Oh, 
Okay, I glued all this thing together and unfortunately it doesn't fit very well. It's also very wobbly. But let's play along. Maybe the glue will make it stiffer. Nothing seems to fit here. I will have to use a ton of glue. The faithful space marines will keep this thing in place while the glue dries. Okay, this looks nice. It's still very wobbly, even after applying a lot of glue. Maybe a proper base would help make it using the guidance of Nigel Stillman himself. The book How to Make War Games Terrain comes from the 90s as well. I will use two layers of cardboard glued together. The edges are cut at an angle to create a gentle slope. I will mark the position of the bunker to create an additional support for it. The support will be made from additional pieces of cardboard. I apply a lot of glue, not just to keep the bunker in place, but even more to strengthen it. The brave space marines answer my call again. Now I will cover the base in static grass. Please don't use the white glue for it, it will bend your base and ruin everything. Use a polymer glue. Cleaning your brushes with alcohol is quite tedious, so I will use a piece of cardboard to spread the glue. I am showing this stage in detail because the use of polymer glue is one of the key elements of my recommendations towards preventing cardboard warping. Look, I even found a way to use the white glue in the process. It's a neat little stand. This is a standard model train static grass. looks pretty nice.
Look, I'm using an original Citadel brush. Amazing! I paint the edges in a light grey paint. This will hide the edges of the original cardstock pieces. And now let's see if we can play like it's 1994. These Gov Orcs move quite fast because they have telescopic legs upgrades. Thank you for watching, see you over at wargaminghobby.com.